Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I have a fun video that I haven't done in a very, very, very long time. I feel like it's probably been more than a year but I'm going to be showing you some books that I have accumulated. Some of them are ARCs, other ones I have bought, other ones have been gifted. So here I am with a huge pile of books, which you probably can't see in frame, but they are here, they are stacked tall, and I am ready to talk about some books today. I hope you all are having a wonderful, what month is it? It's August. <laughs> I forgot what month it was. I swear the summer has gone by so incredibly fast. I don't even know like what happened to July. I feel like July just passed and I didn't even notice it. And it's already halfway through August, which is wild to me. But I hope you all are having a good time of the year. I will say that it is officially spooky season for me. I mean, it's always spooky season, but I have officially decorated my apartment for Halloween. So I will be showing you all probably pretty soon what it looks like. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I still wanna accumulate some more things. But without further ado, let me show you some books. So I have a stack of arcs and books that were gifted to me right here. And I'm gonna talk about them first because there are some titles in here that I'm very excited about. So the first one I would like to talk about is How to Survive Your Murder by Danielle Valentine. First of all, I'm loving the cover. It's gorgeous. And this is from Razorbill Publishing. And this one says, rule number one, never go into the corn maze alone. Rule number two, nothing good happens on Halloween. Rule number three, never be distracted by a hot bad boy. Rule number four, stay alive this time. So this one is coming out in August. I can't remember the exact day it comes out, but I will leave all of that information in the description. But this one sounds really, really fun. It's a YA book. It seems like it's gonna be perfect for Halloween. It's gonna have some slasher vibes, which I am here for. And it looks really good. I'm very excited. I haven't read much more about it because I like sort of going into these kinds of books blind. Actually, I take that back. I like going into a lot of my books as blind as possible because when I look back at books that I've enjoyed the most, they're usually the books that I've known the least about. So that's all I want to know about this one, but it sounds awesome and it seems kind of just like a fun teen slasher. So Tor sent me The Witch in the Well, and this one is coming out in October. And this one is by Camila Bruce, and it looks like a perfect read once again for Halloween. I love this time of year because all of these horror books are coming out. I feel like it's the best time of year for horror books to be published, you know, the months leading up to Halloween. This says, when two former friends reunite after decades apart, their grudges, flawed ambitions, and shared obsession twirl into an all too real echo of a terrible town legend. So this one, when I open it up, I immediately notice that there's this newspaper article, which I really, really love when books have articles in them. I'm not sure how much in here is gonna contain articles like that, but immediately I was really intrigued by that. And also just the title alone, The Witch and the Well, sounds very, very creepy. It gives me very ring vibes. <laughs> you know that scene from The Well in that movie is really scary. And it looks like this is going to be about a woman who was accused of witchcraft. And then it looks like a social media influencer goes back to try to find out more what happened in the past with this story. And things go wrong as they tend to do in horror novels. So this one looks really creepy and perfect for the fall. Another book that was sent to me by Tor is Loot, and this one is by Jennifer Thorne, and this cover is so stunning. I am obsessed. It gives me Midsommar vibes. If you look carefully, it looks like this person has a flower crown on, and this got me thinking. I feel like there's not many books that are purple, so 
I really enjoy this cover and this looks like it's sort of a folklore kind of horror and it says on the idyllic island of loot every seventh summer seven people die so this really reminds me of the movie Midsommar again and I am very interested to read this one I haven't really read many folk horror stories if at all I don't think, I think maybe I would say Stolen Tongues kind of counts as folk horror, but besides that I haven't really read anything that is folk horror, so I really want to see if it's something I enjoy, and this concept sounds really interesting. The fact that it takes place on this island, it really is making me interested in this one. So. I would like to check this one out soon. I hope to get to it before it's published. And like I said, it is coming out in October, 2022. So gifted to me by Celadon Books is The Kingdom of Savannah. And this one came out on July 1st. And this one is by George Dawes Green. And this one looks like a perfect kind of summer mystery thriller. It says, Savannah may appear to be some town of a fable with its vine flowers, turreted mansions, and ghost tours that romanticize the city's history. But look deeper and you'll uncover secrets, past and present, that tell a more sinister tale. It's the story at the heart of George Dawes Green's chilling new novel, The Kingdoms of Savannah. So I've never been to Savannah, Georgia. I've heard it's absolutely beautiful and I always get recommended to visit there because my name is Savannah. But this sort of looks like a southern mystery. You're really going to feel the heat in this novel because it takes place in the south and I hope to check this one out soon. So Tor also sent me What Moves the Dead, and this is by T. Kingfisher, and I'm very excited to read this book. So this one is a reimagining of The Fall of the House of Usher, which I actually don't know the story of. So I don't even know what this one is going to be about, even though it's a reimagining. But basically, this is a gothic book. I know Kayla for her book club, The Literally Dead Book Club, is reading it. So I want to make sure that I read it so I can listen to the discussion. But I am really excited to read this one because I love gothic settings. Gothic settings are so atmospheric, especially when we're getting into the fall months. I know it's still hot here, but... I'm starting to feel kind of that fall vibe. The sun is setting earlier and I have all my Halloween stuff out already. So I'm really looking forward to reading this one. I think I'm going to follow along with the audiobook for this one. And it is a short book. It's only 160-ish pages total. And on the back it says, featuring a genderqueer protagonist, their trusty horse, and a dark manor full of mysteries that will have you asking what moves the dead. So I have two more arcs that I want to talk about, which I did receive quite a while ago, but I haven't done them in a haul yet, so I want to mention them. So the first one I want to talk about is Just Like Mother, and this is by Anne Hatzel. And this one has the freaking creepiest cover ever. Toy dolls are terrifying. I remember when I was younger, I really loved playing with dolls, and I had all of these porcelain dolls in my room, and I had them facing me. And I hit this age where all of a sudden I realized they're watching me as I sleep, <laughs> and that really freaked me out. And so I asked my mom if we could pack up the dolls, and I just remember being really creeped out one day just feeling like things were watching me. So whenever dolls are in horror, I get really interested. So I'm really excited to read this one. So on the back it says, Spine Chilling and Sharp, Just Like Mother, is a modern gothic novel by a fresh new voice in horror. And also it looks like it has cult elements, which I love in books, because in the beginning of the blurb it says, the last time Maeve saw her cousin was the night she escaped the cult in which they were raised. So I am very interested in this one. Let me know in the comments if you've read it and what your thoughts are. All right, so this next one I'm really excited about because the cover is absolutely stunning. It's The Final Women by Pardeep. Ajla. And if you look really closely in the knife, you can see other people in the picture. I just think this is such a stunning cover and I also really, really like the back. I love this tree and everything about this book is just really intriguing. I am assuming it's a slasher because the final girl is a slasher trope. 
and the author of this one so kindly reached out to me and asked if they could send me a copy of the book and of course I said yes because it looks amazing and this one came out on June 15th. On the back it says the mass murdering phantom of Haven Cove is dead. For the one who killed him, however, life has never been the same. How do you return to normality after facing such a monster? How do you live when consumed by guilt, anger, fear, and denial? How do you connect with others when no one understands what you've been through? But there are others, final girls of their own Haven Cove massacres. And now, 30 years later, they must all face a new question. What do you do when the killer returns? So this one sounds amazing. I hope to get to it really soon, and I can't wait to tell you all my thoughts. All right, I am very excited to talk about this next one because I just recently read it and it was a five-star read for me. It just makes me so happy to even talk about, and it is Teen Killers Club, and this one is by Lily Sparks. And this one came out in 2020, and I was just sent a copy of the sequel, which is Teen Killers and Love, and this one is coming out in August. And this is going to be a trilogy, and the author so kindly sent me both of these books. So I can first of all tell you what the first one is about. Like I said, I gave it five stars. I'm obsessed. This is a YA book. So this is about a group of teenagers who are classified as class A criminals, which is basically the most dangerous criminal to society. So the main character is on a bus going to prison, but then something happens and she ends up getting delivered to the this sleepaway camp but once she gets there she's confused because there's no bars it doesn't seem like a prison and she soon finds out she along with everybody else at the camp is getting trained to be assassins and it's top secret and so immediately when I heard that premise I was very intrigued by it and this is so good I loved it so much the writing is so fast-paced and this specific little blurb on the back really intrigued me. It says action-packed, highly addictive, and uncomfortably heartfelt. Readers won't be able to forget Teen Killers Club or its characters who refuse to fit into any mold. And when I read uncomfortably heartfelt, I was so intrigued. I was like, okay, so the premise, you know, sounds like a fast-paced sort of thriller, horror kind of book. How is it going to be super, super heartfelt? But I will vouch for it. It is super heartfelt and I got so attached to the characters by the end of this book. Also, I want to highly recommend listening to this one on audiobook. The narrator was incredible and really, really added to just the atmosphere and the characters in this book. And I really, really love this one. So I'm going to shut up about this because I could talk about it for a long time, but I highly recommend it. And I am soon going to read the sequel and I hope it's just as good as the first one. So Just One Look by Lindsay Cameron was sent to me by Ballantine Books. They gifted me a copy of this one. And this is a finished copy. So on the back it says, Nothing and no one are as they seem in this thriller about envy, obsession, class, stalking, and revenge. So this one I saw on Goodreads is recommended to people who love the stalker trope and the most famous stalker book probably in my opinion, is You by Caroline Kapnis. So I'm intrigued by this one. I am down to read another stalker book and I hope I really enjoy it. All right, let's get into the books that I have purchased or have been gifted to me by friends. And in no particular order, I am just going to share what I recently got at Half Price Books because I hadn't been there in a really long time. And so the first book I wanna show is this cute little horror slash thriller book and it's called Full Tilt by Neil Shusterman. So this one immediately grabbed my attention because I've been really drawn to little kind of vintage looking horror books. You'll see I have more from this haul. Um, but this one grabbed my attention also because it has a Ferris wheel and I've really been wanting to read a horror book that takes place at a carnival lately. It just feels like a good summery vibe. And so I'd never heard about this one before. So this is about a pair of siblings who get stuck in this carnival and they can't escape. And it sort of looks like it's not just a straightforward thriller horror book. It looks like it kind of has some fantasy elements to it, but I'm really interested in it. And since it's so short, it's only 200 pages, but it's this small little book. Um, I really want to give this a try and see if I like it because I've really been craving a book that takes place at a carnival because 
I love Cirque Berserk, but haven't been able to find something that really lives up to Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess. So if you haven't read that one before, I highly recommend it. The next one I actually have read, but bought recently, and I want to show it to you all is Kill River. And this one is so freaking cute. It's by Cameron Rubick, and this is a series. I unfortunately did not enjoy this book. The writing just wasn't for me. It was very, very drawn out for a slasher book. Usually slasher novels are pretty short, but this one really is long. It looks tiny, but it's like almost 400 pages and it's very wordy and not much happens. So I'm so sorry if you love this. I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. It takes place in the 80s and it's a group of kids who end up at this abandoned theme park, but it turns into a slasher and someone is picking them off one by one. But I wanted to show it in this haul because it's so freaking cute and it looks adorable next to this other amusement park horror book. So I briefly held this up before, but I did get Firestarter by Stephen King and I really love this old copy. I think it looks really nice as a vintage horror paperback and it's kind of a little beat up, which kind of adds to the charm. I'm not sure where I'm going to put my vintage old horror paperbacks yet. I'm thinking I want to put up a separate shelf to keep them all together because I don't really want to mix them in with my really kind of in perfect condition books. I just don't think it'll look as good. I want them all together. But I haven't read Firestarter. I'm not sure when I will, but I wanted to at least own this. And I heard that the new movie is awful and I kind of assumed it would be awful, but just hearing that feedback, I was not surprised at all. And then I got an Amityville book. It's not the original, it's Amityville The Nightmare Continues by Robin Carl, who is a different author. But I'm not gonna lie, I mostly got this because I really, really love what this cover looks like. I think it's super pretty. But yeah, that's all I know about it, I just know it takes place in the kind of Amityville universe and is somehow connected to the other books. I have read the original Amityville Horror. I think I gave it like three stars. It was okay. I'm glad I read it. I wasn't obsessed with it and there were a lot of things that honestly kind of annoyed me <laughs> in it, particularly the father. It's always the father in horror movies. That's like so annoying or horror books, horror stories. And then this is a nonfiction and it is On Writing by Stephen King. This one was really cheap. I believe it was only like $2 and I have been wanting to read this. It is a memoir about Stephen King's life, but the big reason why I'm interested in this is because it kind of touches on his creative process as a writer. And I personally want to write a book at some point. I am not sure when it'll happen, but I wanted to own this and it was really, really cheap at half price book so I had to pick it up. All right, so I'm going to move on to a book that I'm very excited about, and it is Finley Donovan is Killing It, and this one is by El Cosimono, and I have heard such good things about this book. So this one was gifted to me by my friend Naomi from Naomi's Library for my birthday, and I've been wanting to read this one for a really long time. I've heard that it gives Dead to Me vibes, which is a TV show that I've really, really enjoyed watching. And this one is about a struggling mom and she is discussing a new plot for her suspense novel. So someone overhears her and someone thinks that she is a contract killer. So she accidentally agrees to become one for someone. And that's all I know about it. I've heard it's hilarious, I've heard it's a cozy read, and I'm really excited to read this one. I'm thinking of reading this for a secret TBR video, that's why I haven't read it yet, but I am really really looking forward to this one. And I love the cover, it's stunning. So I haven't gotten to this one yet, but it's An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher, and I got this one because my husband and I went to Vegas a couple months ago, and I was planning to read it in Vegas because it's basically about this girl girl who goes to Vegas for a bachelorette party. So one of their friends doesn't return and they are being held captive by a killer. And so I've heard really kind of not great things about this one. I don't think most people have liked it, but I still really want to read it. And I hope that I feel really nostalgic to our Vegas trip, which we freaking loved whenever I read this one. And it just seems like a nice fast read. I've only read The Wives by Taryn Fisher and I was not a fan, 
but I'm hoping this one is at least entertaining even if it is not very well written. All right, so I work at a coffee shop and every day if I take out the trash that day, I pass a little library and I always kind of look in and see if there's anything interesting in it. And I found Greenwick Park in there and I really, really love the cover for this one. And this one is by Katherine Faulkner. So I've been wanting to read this one for a while and I snagged it for free, which was awesome. And on the back it says, when Helen, finally pregnant after years of tragedy, attends her first antenatal class, she is expecting to find her loving architect husband, her brother Rory, and his beautiful wife Serena. What she is not expecting is Rachel. Extroverted, brash, single mother-to-be Rachel, who just wants to be Helen's friend, who just wants to get to know Helen and her family, who already seems to know everything about them, every little secret. So I am pumped that I got this for free in the little library. I'm gonna have to donate some books soon because I have some I am unhauling so I will definitely be taking them over to that and it'll be interesting to see how long it takes somebody to pick it up out of the little library. So when I go take the trash out next I can kind of see how long my book ends up in there. I picked up No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville and I have been meaning to read this for such a long time. I have heard from multiple people that this is the scariest book that they've ever read, which immediately makes me excited because, hello, I want to be traumatized. <laughs> so this one sounds like it is a woman who, you know, doesn't have very much money and she finds this amazing deal for an apartment complex, only it's sort of falling apart and the landlord seems really sketchy and it seems like there's some paranormal things going on, but apparently I have been warned that it deals with real life horror as well as supernatural horror. So I'm very interested in this one. I don't really want to know anything more. I am planning to read this one around the Halloween season and my fingers are crossed that it scares the crap out of me. <laughs> so hopefully this one will traumatize me and you'll have to let me know in the comments if you have read this one and how scary it was for you. So for my birthday, I was gifted Hidden Pictures, and this one is by Jason Rakulak, I believe. I'm not exactly sure how to say the last name, but I have read this one, and I will say that I thought this is going to be a new favorite for me. It incorporates pictures, and they are creepy kid drawings, which immediately was something I loved in this book. So it's about this nanny and she goes to stay and watch over this child and she's living in their backyard in this old little cottage and she basically starts trying to unravel a mystery because she finds these creepy pictures that the kid she's watching is drawing and she's creeped out by them and they progressively get weirder and weirder. They start out as just like stick figures and kind of normal little kid drawings and they start getting more and more complicated and they seem impossible to have been drawn by this young child. So I liked about 80% of this so much. The tension was amazing. I, it was creepy, like I really was creeped out. It got really convoluted towards the end. The plot twist didn't sit right with me. I just really did not like it. So this one is getting mixed reviews. Some people are obsessed. Some people are hating it. Let me show you some of the drawings. Like I said, they start out kind of as like normal kid drawings, normal little kid drawings, and then they progress to weirder ones that are really complicated. I'm trying to just find like, yeah, for example, you can see this is obviously way more advanced than like a little kid could draw. I can't remember how old the kid was in this. Pretty young, pretty young. But yeah, I wanted to show you all this one. And then from Book of the Month, I wanted to share, I got You're Invited by Amanda Jayatisa. And I did read this one and I really did not like it. It was extraordinarily slow. Oh my gosh, I was so bored. I don't know why I didn't DNF it. I mean, okay, I do know. I was waiting because this is basically about a girl and her ex-best friend is marrying her ex-boyfriend. And she goes to their wedding and it's really slow, but it keeps hinting that like this big thing happened in the past. And so the whole time I'm waiting to hear like, what was this crazy thing that happened in the past? Like I'm waiting, it's slow, it's building, you know, I wanna know. And once it was revealed, I was like, wait, that's that's it that that's what happened 
okay I shouldn't have waited this long to hear that and I did not like the end there wasn't really a plot twist I mean was there I honestly can't remember if there was even a plot twist I just would not recommend this one I was really excited because I love the guest list by Lucy Foley and that has to do with a wedding setting and so I was really excited for this one but sadly it let me down I also picked up Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier, which I'm excited for. This is the book true pick for August, so I'm hoping to read this in the month of August. And this one looks really, really interesting. It says, when Paris Peralta is arrested in her own bathroom covered in blood, holding a straight razor, her celebrity husband dead in the bathtub behind her, she knows she'll be charged with murder. But as bad as it looks, that's not what worries her the most. With the unwanted social media attention now surrounding her, it's only a matter of time before someone from her long hidden past recognizes her and destroys the new life she's worked so hard to build without any chance of a future. So I haven't read many Jennifer Hillier books. I've only read Wonderland and it was all right, but I've heard such great things about Jennifer Hillier's books, specifically The Butcher, that I really do want to read this and give more of her books a shot. So I am looking forward to this one. I don't really want to know much more. And I also want to say I really, really love the cover. It's super stunning. All right, I have two more books from the little library by my work. One of them I'm bummed about because the sleeve of the cover, which I really, really love, was not on it, but I still had to snag it. And it is One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. And this one looks like a book full of rich people drama. That's really all I know. And I believe it takes place in the South. And I still have this up on my wish list because I do want the cover because the cover is specifically so pretty. I'll put it up here. It's like this woman holding scissors behind her back. And I loved In My Dreams I Hold a Knife and that one has scissors on the cover too. So I'm hoping I'll enjoy this one. But yeah, I don't really know much about it other than it's just filled with rich people drama, which I am really into if it's done well. And this is a good segue to my next book, which was gifted to me by my friend Erin for my birthday. And it is Good Rich People by Eliza Jane Brazier. And this one I loved. I had so much fun with this one. I know that not everybody's gonna love this, but it's so ridiculous. So this is about a couple and basically they make it their life's goal, I guess, to ruin people's lives around them. So they'll have like a housekeeper come in or people renting part of their house and they sort of make it a game to ruin their lives. And so you're just reading from the perspective of this insufferable character and there's a lot of humor in it because of how ridiculously she thinks. And I read this on audiobook. I really enjoyed it that way because I feel like it sort of conveys the tone really well. It has a lot of commentary on upper class people and how it can get to their head very easily. And yeah, this one is a wild ride. Don't take it too seriously if you pick it up. Again, I would recommend the audiobook, but I gave this one four stars because I was highly entertained during it. It also has two perspectives in it and two different narrators, which I really enjoy when audiobooks have different narrators per person. Oh my gosh, I am like sweating in my house right now. It is so warm. Every time I film, I turn off the AC because it's so loud because it'll just come on and be so loud when I'm filming. So I turn it off, but oh my gosh, I am sweating. It is so freaking hot. I need like a giant fan or something on me. But the problem is that creates noise too. All of these like random creator issues. Anyway, so the next book was gifted to me by my friend Cammie from Burroughs and Books. And this one is The Island by Adrian McKinty. And this one I read a couple months ago and I really, really, really loved it. And it's being made into a Hulu miniseries. It's about a family who are taking a vacation and they end up going to this island and the locals are not friendly to them. They don't want them there and something goes terribly wrong and they end up getting stuck on the island. And so the audiobook for this one, I would highly recommend because it uses sound effects. It has rain sounds and gunshots. It's very fast paced 
and I really hated the characters in the beginning, but I really grew to love them. All right, y'all, I'm close to the end. I have one of my favorite books that I've read this year, which is My Dearest Darkest by Kayla Cottingham. And this is a YA dark academic sapphic book. This is a horror story and it takes place at Ulaloom Academy. So this one is about a group of friends who make a deal with this creature who lives underneath their school. And basically this creature will grant them any of their wishes in exchange for body parts. So it starts out being super, you know, small, like a strand of hair or, or even a little bit of a fingernail. And it gets increasingly more sinister and it becomes clear, and it becomes clear that this is an evil creature. So I would highly recommend this one. I talked a lot about it on my channel, but I didn't own it physically. And I love the cover. I love the dark academic vibes. So of course I had to pick it up and it was an amazing deal at Half Price Books. I feel like it was like five bucks. So I immediately picked it up and I was happy to see it there. Another book I got from Half Price Books was Voices in the Snow by Darcy Coates. And I still haven't read a Darcy book. I know I need to change this. My friend Erin from Erin Megan freaking loves Darcy Coates. So if anything, I need to read Darcy for her, but this one has a doll on the cover. It takes place in the winter. I definitely need to wait to read this until the winter but this one looks really, really good. Claire remembers the cold. She remembers abandoned cars and children's toys littered across the road. She remembers dark shapes and the snow and a terror she can't explain. And then nothing. When she wakes, aching and afraid in a stranger's gothic home, he tells her she was in an accident. He claims he saved her. Claire wants to leave, but a vicious snowstorm has blanketed the world in white, trapping them together, and there's nothing she can do but wait. So I am really excited to read this in the winter months when there's snow on the ground. It sounds really, really good and it is part of a series. I picked up The Girl Who Knows Too Much and this is by Tiffany Brooks. So this is about a group of teenagers and they go to this island to compete in this reality TV show, kind of like Survivor. There are rumors of a treasure being on this island and so they're all looking for the treasure. That's about all I know about it, but I have learned that I love books that take place on islands. Something about that secluded island setting really makes me intrigued. And also bringing a reality TV show element into a book is really interesting. So this one is YA. I don't think many people have read it and I would like to read it sometime soon. This next one I mostly picked out because of the cover. <laughs> not gonna lie. And it is The Nanny by Gilly McMillan. This one says, on a hot night in the summer of 1987, Hannah, the Holt family's nanny, left Lake Hall without a trace, devastating seven-year-old Joe. Haunted by the loss of the woman she loved more than anyone, Joe grew up blaming her beautiful aristocratic mother, Virginia. So this basically deals with Joe in the future and she's back at the house trying to figure out what actually happened to the nanny and now she has her daughter and she's being forced basically to live with her only relative remaining which is her mother and her mother has a lot of problems and I read a little bit of this one. I sort of DNF'd it though because it wasn't super interesting to me. I may need to pick this up in the winter months because I feel like that's when I'm more in the mood for like a slow burn sort of mystery. But I'm really glad I own this because of the cover. It's so pretty, oh my gosh, I love it so much. All right, that is all for tonight. I obviously have accumulated quite a few more books since I've done a haul literally more than a year ago. But those were the books that I really wanted to talk about. Let me know in the comments if you want a library book haul because I have a ginormous stack of library books over there under my floating bookshelves. So let me know if you want a library haul because I would love to do that for you. But I hope you enjoyed today's video and I can't wait to talk to you all very soon. Bye.